Hello fellow makers, I'm going to be showing you today how to make your very own leather stamped bookmark. This is going to be a great little project that just about anyone can get involved in if they have some basic leather working tools. I got into leather working, making some metro props. I started on some really simple stuff, slightly stitching, and I've slowly kind of built up what I'm working on. As I got bigger and bigger projects, I wanted to go back to the basics during the quarantine to make some pretty easy and pretty enjoyable bookmarks that I could give to my friends and family. So follow along, and if you wanna make one as well, I'm gonna be giving you a full list of everything you're gonna need and some of the great places you can get some tools because people often ask me, where do you get your tools? Where do you get your leather? And I'm gonna give you a full list of everything you're gonna need. So stay tuned and find out. Before we start, we're gonna need plenty of tools. Now, most of these tools are gonna be pretty starter friendly and you can pick them up on Amazon, through leather stores, uh, AliExpress, eBay. Um, I've been doing most of this since the quarantine, so just about everything I've gotten, I've pretty much got online. So let's go through some of the tools now. First thing you're gonna need is a groover to get all those fine lines. Then a beveler. And next up, all your burnishing tools. One electric, one manual. Next up is your hole punch to punch right through the leather. Then a good selection of sharp knives. You're gonna need this to punch through. Then a nice set of stamps. And finally, a hammer, some contact cement, and a good hammering surface. So for this project, we're gonna need two types of leather. There are pretty much two types of leather when you really get down to it. There's veg tan leather, and then there's chromium tan leather. So if you're looking around your house now and you see some upholstered furniture or some leather clothes, chances are that's chromium tan leather. I'm gonna show you some now. So chromium tan leather, is this much more shiny, much more processed. So during the tanning process, what happens is this is treated with very, very heavy chemicals, most notably, as you can imagine, chromium. And this basically strips an awful lot out of it and kind of gives it a much more processed look. It's much more effective, it's much quicker, and the, the chemical and the damage done to the leather is not substantial. It, it doesn't make it worse, it's just different. So for things like this, you wouldn't really tool them. You couldn't really stamp them or carve intricate patterns into it, but you could make a bag out of it. You could wrap it around a sofa. You, you could do just about anything with this. Most of the leather you think of, you think of chromium tan. When you smell it, you smell a more processed. It smells an awful lot more processed, like it's just come from a factory. So that's chromium tan leather. And uh, so that's when we're gonna be using a little bit of this. And then you have veg tan leather. Now veg tan leather, let's just get this open here. Veg tan leather is a naturally processed leather. Um, this is part of a massive piece that I recently bought. Um, well, it was an awful lot bigger when I originally got it. And it's a side of a cow. And this is basically the natural stuff. This is exactly how it came from the animal. It's been naturally tanned with stuff that's coming from trees. It takes an awful lot longer, but you get a leather that's been undyed, untooled, and you can pretty much do anything with it. So when we're actually working on our bookmark, we're gonna be able to use this to stamp or to carve. And then for the chromium tan leather, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to add a nice process back to it. All right, guys, we've got our tools, we've got our leather, let's get straight into it. We start out by measuring out how big we want the bookmark. I went 20 centimeters by six centimeters. You use a little awl to just measure it out and just cut small little lines. We don't want to hurt the leather, but we just want to be able to see it for when we go back with the knife. Look at those fine lines. You can see it perfectly, all ready to be cut. The awl is perhaps the most useful leather working tool you can possibly imagine. It's literally a pointed metal stick and it is the best thing you'll ever use. It creates little holes for when you're stamping, it marks edges, it just opens things up. You'd be so surprised at something so silly as a little metal awl can make all the difference when it comes to leather working. That's why I absolutely love it. It's my favorite leather working tool because you'd be nowhere without it. You really would be nowhere without this little piece of pointed metal. Take your ruler now and we're gonna start cutting out the leather. Take nice, easy strokes. You don't want to go too hard on this. You don't want to damage it more than you have to. Take easy strokes, hit it a few times, and you'll finally punch through. Leather can be quite tough, so make sure you're using a strong blade and change those blades out regularly. You don't want to be doing this 10 times, 13 times, 14 times. It'll ruin the whole look. 
Make sure you just do a final cut, make sure you get those edges nice and straight. Now it's time to take the beveler. The beveler is used to take off the hardness of the edges and smooth it out so it's nice rolling edges. This is a really enjoyable part of the process and a beveler will never see you wrong. Take your time and enjoy it. Once we have our lines beveled, we take out the groover. The groover is usually used to put down nice clean lines that you can then track in little holes for stitching. But in this case, we're just going to do it because it looks pretty sweet. Take it, lay it down somewhere pretty hard, and then run the groover easily over it. Make sure you change it out regularly because a dull blade, like the one we had here, does not lead to good results. Unfortunately, I hadn't changed out the blade in a while, and you can see it actually did a bit of damage. We'll still keep going, but I'll better make sure I change out those blades in future. Once that's done, we apply a little bit of water to all the edges and we're going to start burnishing. Burnishing is essentially heat on the leather, which essentially polishes it and hardens it up. Otherwise, you have really fleshy ends to everything and it's not going to work well. Here we're using the manual version to heat it up and basically seal in that edge. You can use a manual version or apply a little bit of water and hit it again with an electric one. I personally swear by the electric one attached to my Dremel and I use it all the time. It gives a great polished edge. There's an entire art in burnishing and on lots of other projects this could take 10 or 13 other steps but right now we're going to do it nice and simple. A short word on stamps. Stamps are a nightmare and um, you're going to make a lot of noise and you've got to make sure you have a very very solid surface to stamp on. So if you're just stamping on an uneven surface or a not hard surface you're not going to get in deep. So the core requirement for stamping on leather is you need a very, very solid surface. An awful lot of people use quartz or chopping boards. I'm using a piece of acrylic, um, very, very thick acrylic that basically can take a good wallop. And then you want to, you want to wet your leather. So make it nice and moist. Not too, not, you don't want to soak it because soaking leather can do a bit of damage. But you want to make it nice and moist and then you start the stamping process. So let's get stuck into that. So now we have our leather. We have our burnished edges, we beveled the sides, we've added a little, little divot here, which is nice and an awful lot of these, I really should have changed the blade, but that will probably clean up an awful lot better once we dye it. But now, let's get into stamping, so we want to get a little bit of water, and just get the leather moist. You can see it'll just suck it right up, and we'll get the whole thing going. Once you've moistened it up, take your stamp, find the letters you want, get it right in order, place it down in your leather firmly, get a good hold, and then hammer it down until you finally get it in. You want a deep imprint, but not too deep that you go all the way through. That's just about perfect. You really need to make sure that you have a strong surface to hammer on because you're going to be pushing deep into the leather. If you have a movement or you underestimate it, you can do some serious damage. So really take your time and plan out each and every hammer blow. Another part of this project that we can work on is using some stamps. Now an awful lot of these stamps, it's actually quite helpful to heat them up first, put them on then a wet surface and then just smash them down as hard as you possibly can. Otherwise, they tend to go down, but they don't really have that crisp outline. So we've got our stamp, we've got our lighter. That's just about, needs a little bit more water. Give that a little bit more water. Let it soak in. And then we'll just light this up. Stamps are a great way to work with leather. You can get them in all different types. You can 3D print them. You can custom order them. There's so many different variations and an awful lot of sculptures and car carving work are actually done with stamps that you wouldn't think, you think they're done like with lasers or something like that, but an awful lot of it's just different stamps done over and over and over and over again to kind of give it different effects. It's really, really beautiful.
So that should be heated up now. We don't want to get too hot because the whole thing's metal and conducts heat. We'll place it down. Just going to hit it. Beautiful. To dye the piece, what we're going to use is we're going to use some EcoFlow Evening Blue. Now I've already mixed this up a little bit with a little bit of water and a little bit of dye. This kind of leather dye, it goes a long way. And if you're working with this kind of stuff, you need to be really, really careful because it will literally get everywhere. It will literally get everywhere. Um, so you need to be really, really careful. Gloves on because, well, as I discovered myself, you are a human being and your skin is essentially one step off leather. So if you get leather dye on your skin, your skin is now dyed and it's not coming out for an awful long time. So it's important to make sure you glove up, make sure you have a clear area. I've got a working mat here and we're gonna dye it now. All right, guys, stay tuned. So we're gonna take a little sponge, dip into the dye, only a small amount, and then we're gonna go in short control bursts. Put a bit more dye in there. We don't need that much. Get our edges. Oh, they look gorgeous. Okay, now let's hit it again. I want to build up the layers here. So go for a stronger layer now. Don't need to do the bottom because we're going to be covering that up with a bit of another type of leather. Yeah, let's just get all this in. We've got a nice deep coat on this because it'll dry a bit lighter. Now that we have our little leather bookmark dyed, next thing we need to do is put a top coat over it to basically seal in all that dye. You get water on this, and this dye is going to go everywhere so we don't want that and we also want to give it a nice protective sheen and what you can do here is you can condition it this will soften up the leather and give it a bit of longevity but the also problem is is that it's going to soften up the leather and i want this to be quite stiff to obviously sit in the book and to not be all floppy woppy so we're not going to condition it we're going to go straight to putting a top coat on it now for a top coat what i like to use is resoline this stuff is the best stuff you can possibly use there's other brands out there but there is nothing quite as good as resoline you can get it from the dublin leather store you can get it on amazon you can pretty much get it anywhere and it's absolutely incredible so basically uh, seals in the leather gives it a nice kind of gloss coat and really adds a layer of detail to it let's stick a coat on now just apply some nice even coats Resoline is a brilliant material. You can get it in the Dublin leather store and it gives the best finish I found on leather products. It's just, it's just perfect. I absolutely love this stuff. You can see how the top coat of Resoline has really burning, brought in a bit of gloss and really finished out that dye job, making it look next level. So while we're waiting for the Resoline to dry, we get that beautiful top coat on our leather. We want to back the leather with some chromium tan that we talked about before. So the idea of this is obviously the backside of leather, unless it's properly burnished and tanned, it's always going to be quite rough. It's the flesh side of the leather. So it's always going to be quite rough. Now you can burnish it and spend hours doing that, but that's quite a complicated process and takes quite a while. Um, although I've seen some people do it very, very quickly. What we can do though, is we can add a backing of it with freely available chromium tan. And you can see you kind of have that lovely pattern, you've got that lovely color. These have all come from the tannery, pre-dyed, pre-done. 
But the only thing is, is obviously as it being chromium tan, you can't really tool this in the same way that we could have done with our veg tan. So we couldn't have put in designs, we couldn't have beveled edges and all the rest of it. It would just kind of fall apart. But what's great about chromium tan is it's great for finishes. It's great for sticking on the back of things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this out, we're gonna cut out a little pattern, and then we're gonna get ready to stick it on with contact cement. So here we have our chromium tan. So let's get our on here. Now we've waited about 15-20 minutes. The first coat of Resoline is done and we have our backing cut out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put one last coat of Resoline on it, let that dry for about an hour, and then we're going to attach the back on with some contact cement. Contact cement is a brilliant tool to use. You want to apply a thin layer on both the surfaces and leave it for about 10 to 15 minutes before you join the two together. If you don't wait, it'll go down tacky and it won't work well. But if you do wait, make sure that we line these pieces up perfectly. You get it wrong, it'll stick and harden instantly. So you want to get it perfectly. You want to really get one shot at this. That's dried. Take our scissors and we're going to cut out all around here, removing the excess chromium tan. And we'll just be very, very careful not to get in on the actual veg tan leather because we don't want to cut that up or else we'll have to re dye it and it'll be a nightmare. So we'll just go very, very slowly and we'll just start cutting. Use the hole punch to punch a hole right through the leather and the chromium tan. That'll give us plenty of room for our tassels. So for the tassel, I've got some buffalo hide rope. I think I picked this up in Sostren and Gren in Dublin. So you can just go in and you can pick some of it up. I don't think it's only a couple of euro and it's, it's quite good. And it's actually nice, makes a nice little tassel. So we'll measure out a small bit. You don't need a huge amount. About 10 centimeters, there, thereabouts. Take our scissors, snip. And then we have our perfect piece. We will take our bookmark. Get it just like that, twist it. Take the loop dent, put it through the hole we just made. Bring it up, then take the two other ends. And then it just locks it into place. And then to make sure they don't go anywhere, we'll tie two small loops. And they'll just look great. And there we go. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It came together quite well. The only kind of issues I had was is when I did these sort of edges, the tool was a little bit dull, I have to replace that. It's only a minor thing, I just never did it when I started this. And my leathering, as you can see here on the together, went a little bit over. And that can be really difficult when you're using hand tools. Sometimes you have to make sure you, you get it perfectly. Unfortunately, I didn't get it perfectly here, but that's okay. Sometimes a couple of little issues, that's fine. It adds to the character of it. Guys, I really, really hope you enjoyed this. This was just a fun little project that if you have some basic leather working tools, you can do this. It's a bit of veg tan, a bit of chromium tan, a bit of buffalo hide, and then basic tools and a couple of finishing aid dies. That's all it is. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. If you have any questions for me or you want to ask about any other crafts or creations, please hit me up afterwards and we'll go through it. Guys, have a great day.